Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels Wings TV. Today we have the new First World War Canadian Armored Machine Gun Carrier from Copper State Models. Let's have a look. First sprue is a duplicate, so we've got our Vickers machine gun. A little bit of slide molding action going on here, so we have a slightly hollowed out muzzle, but can maybe drill that out a little bit more. Molded, molded through, so if you don't have an, an ammo belt in there, okay and that'll look good painted up because you get you know black gunmetal type parts you've got brass parts you've got the jacket which is usually painted we've got our wheels and it was pointed out by noted historian and prolific author Steve Zaloga that uh, the dimpled pattern on the tires is not present um, like the real vehicle now that's going to be simply down to molding limitations um, he posted a few pictures of a little jig he made to uh, drill out those dimples but i think most people can live without them probably would have been a rather extensive and expensive endeavor for Edgar to uh, slide you use some multi-part or slide molds to get those in so I'm sure somebody will do some resin if it really is a big issue but uh, I think those are gonna look fine nonetheless got some pieces for some ammo boxes and the uh, the water container because these of course were water-cooled machine guns got the uh, few little links of 303 ammo in here that's gonna take your time detail painting that because you've got your cloth belt with the metal reinforcing strips every so many links plus then you've got your individual cartridges so that can look really nice spade grips a few other little bits and pieces very nice definition very sharp molding Looks quite good. We've got sprue B. So we've got our major side armor plates. And hardly and well, not hardly any, absolutely no ejector pins in the rear area of the vehicle that's gonna be visible. So well one one little one right there, but that's still pretty good. Good on you, Edgar. That's, uh, that probably took a little bit of effort to get that to pop out cleanly. We do have some here, but I believe this area is a little bit more closed in, so we're not going to really see those. But back here where it's important, one tiny little ejector pin mark, that's, that's really good. That means Edgar's paying attention to, you know, it's always good when a modeler designs a model kit because then it's meant to go together. But it doesn't hurt when they're an engineer either. And I think Edgar has got a good blend of engineering and modeling going on here. Nice rivet detail on the hinges. All these panels could unfold up and out of the way so you could get clear arcs of fire. These were not armored cars as much as they were just an armored box with a couple of machine guns in it so they could move them around. Got our radiator. A few ejector pins on that, but probably on the back where you won't see it. Got our front axle. Got our rear axle with the differential. Some very fine pieces molded in here. I'm assuming those are going to be steering linkage or brake lines or something like that. That's molded commendably thin. I'm 
assuming that's one of our drive shafts. Some bracket. Actually, you know, that's probably some brake levers or gear shifts. A few other mechanical bits and pieces. That looks really good. Nice and clean and sharp and looks really good. And we've got the floor, which I assume would have been wooden planks. So you could probably have some fun distressing those and wearing the paint away. Steering wheel, radiator fan, got our headlight, which molded all the way through. Uh, got our frame rails with our leaf springs molded in. It is a bit of a mold line on those leaf springs, but scrape that down, it wouldn't be too bad. Plus, that's going to be on the bottom, so it's not hugely important. Got our other leaf springs. Of course, these were made by the auto car company in the United States, which were building commercial trucks at the time, so this had a heavy-duty suspension on it. Our, ex our exhaust and muffler. The end's not hollowed out, but uh, easy to, easily done with a drill bit. Got our, our probably drum brakes. Seeing how this is 1914, those look really those look those look better than I've seen in some car kits. So that's that's nice. Some more armored panels. With a nice, very nice rivet detail throughout. It's, Take some dry brushing and some washes very nicely. And ejector pins on the back and underneath where you're not going to see them, so that's definitely some careful planning. A few, a few bits and pieces slide molded here. So. Not too bad, not a very complicated vehicle. It was just a box on wheels with two Vickers guns. And the last little sprue, we've got your headlight lens and then a couple of other little clear parts here. Nice and clear, nice and shiny, awesome. And our decals, not a lot of markings. Printed in cartograph, Italy, so be no drama using these decals. Very nicely printed. Just enough clear carrier where it's needed, not more than is necessary. Hopefully that that white looks like it should be nice and opaque for our dark green vehicle. And various numbers, so you can probably do looks like probably four different vehicles. Yep. Armored armor kits never have a lot of decals, but the ones that are, you do get should work just fine. And the best part of a Copper State kit, the instructions. Instruction manual for the Canadian Armored Machine Gun Carrier, 1914. Ottawa Printing Bureau. <laughs> so we've got a very in-depth history of the armored auto cars with pictures of the uh, the only surviving vehicle at the Canadian War Museum in Ottawa. And you can see in these pictures those dimples and all the uh, the rubber tires. So if you want to take the effort to go and drill those all out, have at it. Uh, there's also a book by Service Publications, um, Canadian Armored Auto Car. Um, short little book, but that gives uh, some in-depth history as well. If you can, uh, if you can find them, I don't think they're still in print. But I'd say uh, Edgar's done plenty of research here for everybody. So that's, uh, I mean, this this kit's worth it just for the uh, reference material. In the instructions proper, so we got our sprue map, 
some suggested color callouts. And if you've never built a copper state kit or you haven't bought one yet, get them. Even if you even if you never build it, just look at the instructions because they are so pretty. Assume this is probably representative of the bottom of our engine. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of our. I guess you call this a curb side if this was a model car. So you got a representation of the uh, gearbox and the underside of the engine. Drive shaft. Then we attach our exhaust pipes. Some cross members. This closes, goes in between the two frame rails. We have our leaf springs. Uh, something that a lot of companies do. Oh, here, put this thing with this other thing, but. Oh, here's what it looks like from the other side. So you know, oh, I've got two little locating points here as well. So you're not trying to guess what's going on here. That's attention to detail. It's just something these guys are amazing at. Even here, like, okay, put your leaf springs on. But wait, there's more. Really nice tight close up from this angle. This piece attaches to this piece. So these are joined together. You'd never, be, you'd never figure that out looking at this picture, so they handfully show a nice close-up here. That's, that's great. Got some color call-outs already. The entire vehicle is uh, some, some shade of green. They call it for green moss. Um, I don't know if Edgar has any particular color, or I should say paint brand in mind, but... Um, with the First World War subjects, kind of like the tanks and everything else, there's no high def 4K super color pictures of anything in that time period. So if they just say green, pick your favorite green and you're probably not gonna be entirely wrong. Some more cross member P. Okay, they get oh, some pieces, I guess, connecting to what would be the engine. And our cooling fan with our radiator. Get some cooling hose or steering column. Ah, okay, that's what. So this is probably where you would hook up a crank because this is, of course, the early part of the 20th century, so there was no electric ignition. You had to get out and use uh, some elbow grease to start these engines. So that would go through the radiator into the engine block, and you'd have to turn the engine over by hand. That would have an interesting little diorama possibility there. Let's again show it here that this is perfectly in line. Part B10, which goes into the back of the frame rails. Multiple views showing how that all goes together. That's awesome. Stalling stowage box cover. It's kind of hard to see. Um, looks like there's a couple little lugs or pips or something there that the, uh, the top locates onto. Our rear axle. Sorry. Rear axle and front axle with our uh, steering cross member. And that goes on. Once again, nice close up of where these different pieces connect together. That's great. Got our disc brakes with our brake linkages going up to. The, the mechanics of the running gear, this is insanely well detailed. We got some of our armor panels, got our pedals, pedestal for one of the guns, some more little okay, more 
base for the mount for the second machine gun, and the supports for the armor panels, I mean for the, the floor plops down onto the frame, steering wheel, and to make our gear levers. Got our got our horn and guaranteed that one goes auga. More showing where the uh, side armor plates locate onto the the floor, so you're not just guessing, which is which is great. Once again, you know here's where it goes on, draws your attention. Make sure it lines up with these pieces. Make sure these parts line up with all these places. They don't leave anything to chance. So if this kit doesn't fit, you're doing something wrong. Because guys at Copper State, they're like, hey, hey. Make sure all these parts hook up. That's great. It's probably the, probably the gas tank. The opposite side armor plate once again, drawing your attention to all the various little points around the vehicle where these locate and attach. We got our rear piece. With our piece for a little stowage box, got some grab handles and locking handles. <laughs> Assembling the acetylene gas lamp. <laughs> this vehicle had a gas lamp, didn't even have an electric lamp. We got one big one in the middle and then two small ones on either side. A couple of little pieces. Okay, so these parts are identical, but you nip off the little attachment point on the side you don't need. Once again, from the bottom up, watch where the armor plate attaches to the front. Armor plate on the bottom. Oh, which we can have flipped up to show off the radiator if we want and a little bit of the suspension components so that you know another diorama possibility there have some some guy some poor sod working on the radiator because it's good another armor plate i guess that's protecting the uh the rear differential some looks like little steps our wheels some another handle and we get on to the punch with the machine guns and we got our Ammo box, with the lid and the belt, the bullet belts, which attaches on, spade grips. <laughs> I even give you the, the starting end or the spent end of the belt to drape through on the other side. That's, that's amazing. Because these were, of course, cloth belts, so they don't just stick right out. They'd flop down. Of course, these are the Vickers machine guns. The very first vehicles when they went to France were equipped with Colt Browning machine guns, also known as the potato digger for the big actuator arm that would kick down at the front. So if, if you can track down some of those in 135th scale, you could do one of the very early vehicles. Of course, our water, water return, or water condenser, I should say. Little note, World War I condenser hose was made of metal. Do not paint it as rubber. Those were used only after World War I. So if you're using a Vickers gun as reference and you're looking at a World War II one, apparently that's wrong. And adjust the length of the hose according to your MG angle and position. So I'm assuming... That's actually very curious. How how would this... I suppose if you traverse the gun around, you'd have to move the condenser tube around with it, because if this is metal, it wouldn't be flexible. So that's, that's interesting. That's some, some poor bugger's job just to move the condenser can around if, you, if you're traversing the machine gun. Port arms, the machine guns go on. And 
you have a finished armored auto car. That is a impeccably well done, well detailed. Like the 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 drivetrain has more detail than most model car kits do. That, that's I mean aside from you know I mean a lot of it's hidden behind armor plates, but it's there. I mean no engine. I mean, unlike some of his other armored car kits where he actually gives you an engine, this one is kind of buried under the driver's seat, so I guess he figured, you know, it's going to it would probably take forever to get that open, so, you know, don't waste a lot of effort where it's not going to be seen. But, yeah, these, these instructions, I mean, clear, leave no guesswork, show you multiple angles, of how an assembly goes together. Beautiful, very well done. And of course, all of our various painting options, uh, any color you want as long as it is green. Uh, what exact shade of green is probably gonna be open to interpretation. Um, these, this could be some sort of drab green. Um, one interesting thought could be uh, this could be some sort of glossy bright green because Autocar was a civilian commercial truck company, so maybe they just used whatever green they had in the stocks. So I'd say pick a green and go with it. So we've got vehicles 5793 and 5797, Aras, April 1918, we've got a different iteration of number 5797 in the summer of 1918, uh, to per the, oh, the, the Victory Parade in Mons, Belgium. One vehicle from 1st and one from 2nd Brigade. Uh, 5792B battery, Aras, April 1918 again. Vehicle 5784A battery at Aras. Yeah, these, although these went overseas with the, um, the initial deployment of the Canadian Expeditionary Force, they didn't see a lot of use until the German Spring Offensive in 1918, in which case these guys were kept very busy scooting all over the Western Front, plugging various holes in the line and shoring up uh, the defenses and various counterattacks against the Germans and uh, apparently did very well for themselves. Vehicle 5784A Battery, Amiens Roy Road, Battle of Amiens, August 1918. So same, so a couple of, I mean, there wasn't a lot of these vehicles made. So we've got some duplicates, but at different time periods with slightly different markings. And that's it. Of course, made by Copper State Models in Latvia. So, the new 135th scale Canadian World War I armored machine gun carrier from Copper State Models. This is a very nice looking kit as to be expected from Copper State Models, a small company that have been punching above their weight class for quite a while now. Parts look clean, crisp, well molded, hardly any mold lines, and those that are there are relatively insignificant. You know, ejection pin marks properly placed so they're not any place you're going to see them or really have to worry about them. The instructions, as always, are absolutely gorgeous. Multiple views of complicated assemblies so you know exactly where parts are supposed to go and line up and attach to. Really, really well done job all around by Copper State Models. Especially taking on such a unique vehicle. This is the first ever mainstream injection molded 135th scale kit of this unique Canadian vehicle. This was the first armored vehicle, if you can call it such, in the Canadian Army. And 
constituted the world's first organized mechanized military unit. Um, this predated the you know Royal Tank Regiments and the German units. I mean it's you know it's an oddball vehicle, but we did it first. Go Canada. Very much looking forward to putting this kit together. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our eventual build review of this kit. Thank you very much. We'll catch you next time.